Hi, I'm Jenny Brown and a warm welcome to our weekly buy to let mortgage market update. A very, very happy new year to you all. Um, I hope you're keeping really well. Um, it's not quite the start to 2021 that we'd all envisaged, is it? Um, I, for one, am feeling, um, yeah, a bit fed up with everything, if I'm brutally honest. And also, um, I'm staring down the barrel of the gun of homeschooling. Now, for those of you who um, haven't necessarily watched all of the videos um, that I've done, um, I'll just reshare with you um, my son's recount on his experience of homeschooling with me, um, which was where he told me that he was the worst teacher that he had ever had. Um, so my poor child is now going to be um, exposed to six weeks at least of me trying to homeschool him. So um, yeah, absolutely good luck to every single single other parent who's in the same boat as me it's really not easy particularly when you're trying to juggle um a full-time job as well and I only have the one child so you know I know that I'm much better off than many of you so good luck in terms of um the market and what we've seen since we've returned back from Christmas the lender activity has actually been remarkably quiet um it does tend to take in January a bit of time for the lenders to come back and um really come out to play in terms of making changes to criteria and pricing and all that kind of stuff. So it's no great surprise that actually on that front, it's been very, very quiet. Um, only a couple of lenders have um, amended pricing very, very marginally. So nothing really to report on the lender front. However, we have got some bigger um, fish to fry this week, haven't we, in terms of lockdown three and what this actually means for you guys um, as landlords and property investors and you know potentially home movers as well. So first of all, the very good news is that the housing market will absolutely be remaining open during lockdown three. And by this, what I mean is that house viewings can still go ahead, um, obviously under the um, strict guidance for uh, making sure that everyone is kept safe and protected. But they can still go ahead and also home moves can also still happen. So that's really positive. Now, in terms of the mortgage application process, obviously um, lockdown um, would lead one to question whether valuations can actually still go ahead. And the very good news here is that valuations are able to still happen. Now, there is guidance in place with regards to um, the valuation process, so what happens when the valuer actually comes out. And if you do um, need to have a valuation done on your property, um, you will be contacted in advance by the valuation company who will advise you on the, um, the, the procedure that you need to follow. Um, now, in terms of what that really looks like, first of all, surveyors will be coming into the property. They'll be wearing full PPEs. So they'll be wearing masks, gloves, um, hand and foot coverings as well. What you would need to do is, um, first of all, vacate the property 30 minutes before the valuer comes in. And you would need to um, prop open any doors, um, windows, loft hatches, that kind of thing, to really just avoid the valuer having to um, make any contact with the property or minimise how much contact they need to actually make with um, physically with the property. Now, um, in terms of what this means um, in real life, um, so the, it's great that the valuations can still happen. Obviously, um, the first lockdown, they weren't able to and everything kind of um, locked up for a while. So it's really good news that they um, can still go ahead. Where we perceive the potential issue being is really um, the fact that the property needs to be vacant. So just keep in mind that if you are having a property evaluation done on a property, um, particularly if you don't occupy it, so you're asking tenants to kind of... Um, be obliging of the situation. Um, first of all, I think for those people who let the properties to families where they've got children who are homeschooling, um, when you're asking for the property to be vacated 30 minutes in advance of the valuer turning up, and then they have to be out of the property while the valuer is, is inside of um, the property doing the inspection, and um, that does mean that the family are going to be outside of their home for a period of time. And obviously, um, the weather isn't fantastic at the moment. It's not particularly nice just to go you know, over to the park and have a walk. So um, it's probably just worth being mindful of that. The second one is if you have HMOs, obviously asking um, many different people to vacate a property all at the same time could be tricky. So I suppose really um, it's not insurmountable by any stretch of the imagination, but it's really just worth knowing that if you are looking to um, purchase a property or refinance at the moment um, just to be very mindful of um, the kind of rules and requirements and the impact on the people who are actually um, living in the property at the time. Now the stamp duty holiday deadline is looming 31st of March for those of you who weren't aware and there is some speculation in the market as to whether that stamp duty holiday will now be extended owing to the, the lockdown situation. 
Now, the reason um, people are calling for um, the stamp duty holiday to be extended is because um, while the housing market absolutely remains open, naturally it's going to slow things down somewhat in terms of processes. So people, are, um, some industry figures are calling for it to be extended to ensure that um, provisions are made so that people don't miss out essentially. Now, what people are sort of citing the term of between two and what, sorry, one and two months for the extension. But, you know, whether this will actually happen or not would remain to be seen. And it, what that would actually look like if it did happen also is um, very much in the mix. Now, um, I was just reading an article which was quite interesting, which said that the recent figures from the Bank of England show that mortgage approvals rose to their highest level in 13 years, um, with net borrowing hitting 5.7 billion in November 2020. And it's really quite obvious that the um, housing market has been performing incredibly well. Um, and that has been underpinned, um, at least in part, um, by the stamp duty holiday. Um, and without the um, support of the government extending this holiday, it's likely to kind of, um, you know, slow down very, very rapidly. Now, what this article was also saying was that given the amount of time it takes to offer exchange and complete, in reality, the 31st of March deadline for stamp duty cut has already expired in terms of new purchases. Um, so, you know, if you were thinking um, right now, oh, actually, I think I'm going to go and buy a bicycle and try and sneak in before, before the 31st of March, um, you may find that you've actually just left it a little bit too late now. Having said that, if you are one of those people, um, don't be afraid to go ahead with things. Um, there are, particularly from the mortgage side, solutions which can be designed to help you with this. Um, but just know that you are leaving it pretty close to the wire. Um, but so what this article went on to say is that the housing market is in a fairly um, precarious position in terms of um, what happens when the incentive to move and the stamp duty holiday has, has finished, um, what then happens to it. Now, a freeze in the housing market would be um, compounded by the um, dire economic um environment which is expected over the next few months with the OBR, um, which is the government's fiscal watchdog, um, warning that COVID-induced unemployment will peak at 7.5% in the second quarter of 2021. And that's going to inevitably hit mortgage applications. Um, so this further really goes into um, kind of the argument and school of thought as to why the stamp duty holiday should be extended. Um, I'm sure Rishi Sunak is um, currently scratching his head over this and thinking about it. And as soon as we have more news on this, we will absolutely be um, very, very quick to let you know. Now, just coming back to the stamp duty holiday um, tenuously, um, there is delays on um, housing searches, um, and we've talked about this in previous weeks. There are some um, authorities which are actually performing incredibly well, and there are some which are just, they've fallen off the cliff, really. Um, so the Council of Property Search Organisations, or COPSO, I think we do the in acronym, COPSEO, has written to the Housing Secretary, Robert Jenrick, um, asking for his intervention to address the growing issue of delays in the provision of searches to home buyers and their conveyances. So according to COPSO data, more than 35% now of local authorities are taking more than 20 days to process search requests. Um, for many of these cases, the delay are more than 30 working days and in some cases significantly more. And again, we've reported on that previously. Um, these delays are now impacting the progress of transactions and thus the problem requires immediate attention. Now, um, I guess really this just comes back to in terms of what this would mean to you. If you are thinking about um, acquiring a property, you're looking to sneak in before the end of the stamp duty holiday deadline um, and that doesn't get extended beyond the 31st of March. Um, it's worth just speaking or doing a check with the local authority to understand how long their searches are taking um, because, you know, this could literally be the thing that kind of um, decides whether you are able to complete in time for the stamp duty holiday or not. Um, we do have access to um, some very good data at Mortgages for Business. So if you are um, looking to find out more about that, please do just give us a call. We'd be very happy to um, give you the information that you need to um, understand where this would impact you personally. So that's really the kind of big news. Um, I really wanted to just share with you um, this week a little bit more about what we're seeing in terms of what our clients are doing and where their heads are um, kind of going in terms of their plans for 2021. Um, I think being a landlord, it can be quite a lonely experience in that you're not in an office full of other landlords conversing and sharing ideas. So it's often nice just to hear what other people are um, up to, what their thoughts are on the market and all that kind of stuff. Now, I think it's fair to say that um, there are definitely um, clients of mortgages for business who are acquiring properties at the moment. They're not put off 
um, by the current um, economic uncertainty or the kind of lockdown situation. Um, they're ploughing on regardless because buy today is their business. And just like as mortgages for business, we have to carry on through all of this. A landlord also will carry on investing during this time. So that's really good to see that they're being really resilient and robust in their approach. Um, I think it's fair to say that definitely when speaking to our clients, um, people are you know, thinking about the future, um, how the pandemic is going to change um, tenants' requirements, essentially their customers' um, requirements. And I think it's um, we're definitely seeing people reconsidering the kinds of properties they're investing in and the locations of those. Now, we've talked before um, about... Um, kind of the longer term impacts in people's living requirements. You know, I think at one point we all thought we were never going to be going back to the office um, and actually being, you know, in commuting distance from um, a city, for example, would be less important. And I think we've been on a bit of a journey through um, the lockdown process as we've, you know, kind of gone full circle on this. And actually a lot of people who are, to begin with are very, very excited about the prospect of never having to go to work again. Um, actually, we're very, very happy when they were called to go back into the office and actually spend time you know, interacting with their peers and going through a more traditional working day. And I think realistically, um, of course, there will be some companies who just don't have a return to office policy. But I think actually most businesses will be expecting employees to come back, you know, in the future when we're able to do so. And so, yes, I think it's worth just thinking about when you're investing property, you know, um, does it provide a kind of a certain type of lifestyle that people are more interested in, more green space, more parks? Um, you know, does it have a second bedroom to allow for working from home if that's the, the kind of want of the, um, the tenant? Um, but actually, I wouldn't be entirely put off from investing in city locations either, because like I said, I do think there will be a return to the work working um, environment in the future. But also, I think it's really important to note that, you know, actually, um, you know, just because I'm really boring and um, settled and don't particularly want to go to the pub every night, um, not everybody's in that same situation. Actually, there is a whole still a raft of, you know, young people who still want to experience that city um, life, you know, and the kind of buzzy environment that affords. So I think, you know, actually, things aren't going to be quite as black and white in terms of um, housing requirements in the future. I think things are going to go back more towards um, pre-COVID as time um, evolves. We're also seeing a large number of clients um, very much reconsidering their financial position. I think it's fair to say that some people are um, definitely holding off investing at the moment because they're thinking the property market is frothy. Um, there's no escaping that fact. You know, we've been reporting on it for God knows how many weeks now. Um, but they are expecting things to calm down and, you know, house prices to ease off slightly. So um, there are definitely landlords who are just kind of sitting back and buying their time. But what they are absolutely doing in the meantime is shoring up their position to be um, ready with cash available to be able to go and buy property when the market calls and the right opportunity arises. And so what we've definitely seen at Mortgages for Business is a notable increase in people who are um, looking at their portfolio, doing portfolio reviews with us. We've seen a real surge in portfolio reviews at the moment where we comb through the portfolio. We look at where we're able to extract equity from the properties to give our clients a deposit to go off um, and be ready to invest in a good investment when it occurs. So I think that's really the mainstay of where people's heads are at the moment. Um, I think people are also um, much more focused on cash flow, um, partly because of nervousness around rental payments being made during lockdown, but also um, because of the Section 24 and the tax changes. So people are really feeling the bite of that now and they're really looking to um, consolidate their cash flow position, um, trying to minimise that to kind of you know give them some more breathing room. And so actually, a lot of people are just really coming to us and saying, here's my portfolio. This is what I'm paying. Actually, can I save any money on this by remortgaging? So again, if that sort of feels familiar to you, do give us a call. We'd be very happy to have a look at the portfolio and just see if there is any um, savings to be made, particularly because interest rates are still, you know, very, very low. And I think the last thing we're seeing is definitely um, people who are um, looking to move into the refurbishment space. Um Interestingly, I had three separate people um, phone me on Boxing Day um, and leave voicemails. I wasn't actually taking calls on Boxing Day. I'm not actually that sad or committed to my job, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so people were um, 
definitely thinking about the future and really considering, you know, what they can do going forwards to really acquire a property and add some real value to it. And refurbishment is um, proving to be quite popular. And that can be people just literally acquiring property that needs, you know, some cosmetic work. It can be um, adding some space to the property, for example, going into the roof. Um, but also we're finding people are becoming more and more interested in just interested in um, conversions under permitted development. So our plan is over the coming weeks to really kind of go into those in much more detail to really kind of explain to you how these things will work. Um, but in the interim, you know, if you are thinking about, um, you know, looking at any one of those types of projects or indeed just want to have a chat about mortgages, you know, do give us a call. Um, we're very much open for business as we have been through the whole of COVID. Um, and we have consultants who are very um, happy to have a chat with you and run through your requirements and really just discuss, I guess, almost the art of the possible in terms of, you know, what can be done. So do give us a ring 0345 345 6788. Have a look at our website. It is absolutely chock a block with information, case studies. The case studies are really, really popular with people. It just really sort of gives you an insight into what other people have been up to. Um, and I think, you know, deep down we're a bit nosy by nature, aren't we? I'm just speaking for myself here. Um, but do go and have a look. But that's really us for this week. Um, so a fairly quiet week in terms of lender news, um, but obviously lots going on in the broader background. So until next week, do look after yourselves, stay indoors, wash your hands and all that kind of stuff. But most importantly, just look after yourselves. And for those parents who um, are homeschooling, just make sure that you have a really big stash of wine in your cupboards. See you next week. <laughs>